In this video, I'm going to talk about the bridge pattern and show you how to build it in Python. But I'm not just going to build the standard bridge pattern. No, no, no. We're going to do things the Pythonic way. Before we dive in, I have something for you. It's a free guide to help you make better design decisions. You can get it at arioncodes.com slash design guide. It's a PDF file straight to the point explaining the steps that I take when I design a new piece of software. And hopefully it's helpful to you. So arioncodes.com slash design guide and the link is also in the description of this video. Consider an application that can stream to different streaming services, YouTube, Twitch, anything. And on the other hand, you also have different streaming devices that link to these different streaming services, devices like webcams, cameras, microphones, etc. Now you want to be able to add new streaming devices without having to change any code in the streaming services and the other way around. So how do you set that up? Well, that's where the bridge pattern comes in. This pattern introduces two separate hierarchies of abstraction. In the Gang of Four book, I find the way that this pattern is presented a bit confusing. They talk about an abstraction with refined abstractions and an implementation with concrete implementation subclasses. So those are the two hierarchies. But it's not really clear why one hierarchy is an abstraction and the other an implementation because they're both abstract in the sense that there's an abstract superclass with subclasses. So I prefer to keep things simple and just say that there are two hierarchies in this pattern and that there's a dependency between them, but that you can introduce new variations, new subclasses in each hierarchy independently from each other. Now, let's take a look at the bridge pattern class diagram. Let's take a look at a class diagram of the bridge pattern. So I made this using the mermaid plugin for VS Code. Mermaid is a really useful tool. I've talked about it in one of my previous videos that allows you to define all kinds of diagrams, UML diagrams, Gantt charts, anything using text as a part of, in this case, Markdown. So as you can see, I have a bunch of classes here and inheritance relationships. And this is basically taking the definitions from the gang of four book on design patterns and just creating the diagram here in text. So I've also used the same kind of confusing terminology here, but you can see on the right what that diagram actually looks like. And what you can see is that we have here the abstraction, which is an abstract class. Then we have the refined abstractions one and two. So that's one of these inheritance hierarchies. And we have another inheritance hierarchy here, which is the implementation according to the Gang of Four book. And we have concrete implementation one and concrete implementation two. And then the idea of the bridge pattern is that then you can add more of these abstractions without having to change anything here in the implementation side. And you can add more implementations without having to change anything here. What makes the bridge pattern interesting is that the coupling occurs on the abstract level. The abstraction, which is abstract, uses the implementation, which is also abstract. And the coupling happening on this level is what lends the bridge pattern its power. Let's look at an example. So I want to look at a simple example, more concrete example to kind of go away from these very abstract terms that are kind of meaningless. So I made another diagram here, which is more of a practical example of how you could use this. So here, for example, I have also these two inheritance hierarchies. I have a streaming service, which is can be a YouTube streaming service or a Twitch streaming service. And there is a couple of methods here, like starting a stream, stopping a stream, filling the buffer with video data, whatever, you know, there might be more methods here. Probably streaming service are way more complicated than this, but just as an example. And then we have the device. So the streaming service uses a device to stream data. And the device has another method called get buffer data. So the idea here is that we want to be able to introduce new streaming services. You know, if there's a new platform that we want to stream to, then we want to add another subclass here. But we also may want to add other devices. So now I have a webcam here, but we might have a DSLR camera. Maybe there are other devices that we want to add to this list so that we can use them with any streaming service we like. And that's what the bridge pattern is good at, at allowing those kinds of things. So let me just close this preview and then I'll also switch to the code to show you how you could actually implement this in Python. So I have a main file here that's basically there to patch everything up. And then I have a stream folder that contains a bunch of these different devices. So what you can see is I have here the streaming service for which I'm using a protocol class in Python. 
And this has the start stream, fill stream, and stop stream methods. And then I have a bunch of different specific streams, like I have the YouTube stream, which has a start stream, fill buffer, etc. And as you can see, my YouTube streaming service that has the device in this case, and same for the Twitch stream. So it's also a streaming service that refers to a streaming device. A streaming device is a protocol class that only has one method, get buffer data. And then we have different devices as well. We have the DSLR camera that has this, and we have a webcam that also has this. And in the main function, I'm basically creating a couple of devices and services, start streaming, and then I create another device and another streaming service. So when I run this, then basically you get a bunch of logs here of starting various streams with buffer data that it receives from various different devices. And you can easily see that it's really easy now to create extra devices here. And then I can just pass them along to the particular streaming service without having to change anything in the streaming service because the streaming service, they only use the get buffer data method from each device. So as long as you implement that, you're basically good to go. And there you see that's basically the whole idea of the bridge pattern. That's, let's look one more time at this diagram that we have this hierarchy with the streaming service that is YouTube streaming, Twitch streaming, we might want to add more, Facebook streaming, whatever. And we have the other hierarchy here that's interacts with the streaming service, but we can add more devices without having to change anything here. We can add more streaming services without having to change anything in the devices. So that's the bridge pattern. That's the basic setup of the bridge pattern. So one thing that's nice about Python is that functions are first class citizens. So you can pass them around, you can do lots of things with them. Python has a very strong functional component. And because of that, we can move beyond the traditional object-oriented design patterns a bit and change this to become a bit shorter. For example, here we have a streaming device, but basically it's a function, right? It's a function that retrieves data. So why bother creating a class at all? We can even simplify this and just say, well, you know what? If we have a streaming device, we just need a function that when we call it gives us buffer data. And that's, that's all we need. So instead of following the bridge pattern with two hierarchies, we can also simplify this a lot by turning some of these things into functions. So let's do that for streaming device. You can see that the code will become much simpler. So actually, because we're dealing with functions, we won't need this device file anymore. What I can do instead is go here, and this is basically where I defined a couple of utilities, and I also defined that buffer data. For now, that's going to be a string. Normally, that's, of course, going to be something else, but for the example, I wanted to keep it simple. But what you can also do is say, well, let's say we have a buffer, that allows us to get data. And that's actually a callable that gets no parameters and that returns buffer data. So that's our buffer. And instead of having these devices being instances of classes, we can also make them just functions that return buffer data. For example, our DSLR camera, I can just remove this and then select this and de-indent this. And let's call this get DSLR buffer data. And of course, the self is no longer needed either. So then this is what we get, much simpler than a class, right? And we can do the same thing for the webcam as well. So I have here the webcam class. Let's de-indent this and then uh, get webcam buffer data and then remove the self. And we have our webcam function. The service now also becomes simpler. Let's take a look at, for example, the YouTube stream service. So the device, we're no longer going to have a streaming device, but instead uh, we're going to have a buffer, which is of type buffer, like so. And then when we fill the buffer, then basically instead of going through the device, we're just writing self dot buffer and we call that as a function like so, and that gives us our buffer data. And then this import is no longer valid and we also don't need it anymore. And let's change it in the same way in the Twitch streaming device. So here I'm going to write buffer as well. And that's also going to need that buffer, this one we don't need anymore. And when we go here, then we're going to do the same thing. So this is going to be the 
buffer and the rest we can delete. So again, much simpler than what we had before. Let me just run the code to make sure that this is still working as expected. Now, of course, we also need to change things here because this we're going to do slightly differently. So I'm not going to create a DSLR camera, but we're going to pass a function get DSLR buffer data. And note that we're passing the function. We're not calling the function here. We're passing it so that Twitch streaming service can call it later on. And the same thing here, we're going to remove the webcam and we're going to put in here the get webcam buffer data function so that the YouTube streaming service can call that function. So let's run this and verify that this still works. So this seems to work still correctly. So the idea is the same. We have still two independent hierarchies of things, except in this case, one of those hierarchies is not a class inheritance hierarchy. It's a bunch of functions and the decoupling happens by defining the type. So that's why types are also, also really useful. They provide a way to decouple things like we're doing here. The bridge pattern is actually a good use case for not using a protocol class, but using an ABC. The main reason is that we can use the abstract base class, the ABC, to define the relationship between the abstraction and the implementation in the pattern. So in this case, it's the relationship between the streaming service and the streaming device. With protocols, this isn't possible because there is no inheritance relationship, only doc typing. And while we look at this, let's also introduce a little variety. Wouldn't it be nice to have a list of devices instead of a single device? By using ABCs, we can define this behavior in a single place in the abstract base class and then use that directly in any of the streaming services. So let's see what that looks like. So let's change the streaming service now into an abstract base class. And what we can now do is because this is a class and we're going to inherit from this class, we can put things in this class that are going to use to be useful to the subclasses, like having a list of devices in here. And because of that, let's also use a data class because then it's way easier to define instance variables. So we're going to create a list here of devices. That's going to be a list of buffers, which we're going to import and this is going to be a field, which we'll also import from data classes with the default factory of list. So by default, there are no devices attached to the streaming service. And then we can add a few helpful methods here, like add device, and that's going to get a device buffer, and that's going to return none, and that's going to append device to the list of devices. And we can even have a method that is called retrieve buffer data, which is just going to be a helpful thing for the other streaming services. And that's going to get the self and that's going to return a list of buffer data, like so. And this is going to return, let's use list comprehension. We're going to call the device, or let's call that buffer actually, for buffer in self.devices. And this should be an opening parenthesis like so. So that's our list comprehension. And then these things, they're going to be abstract methods. Like so. So our abstract base class is now a lot more powerful. Oh, I still need to add the data class decorator here, like so. So it's much more powerful now because we already added some implementation here inside the streaming service. Now, of course, what we need to do now is make sure that the YouTube stream and Twitch stream actually use the new streaming service. So let's go to the YouTube streaming service class. And this we should make a subclass of streaming service like so. And the data class thing we can remove because we're not introducing extra instance variable here. So I'm just going to remove this. And now retrieving the buffer is basically done by calling the self.retrieve buffer data, like so. So that's going to give us our buffer data. In this case, it's an array. So we'll have to deal with that if we're really going to implement the streaming service. But this is basically what it looks like. So I have the YouTube streaming service. 
and that implements these methods right here. This import is no longer needed, so we can delete that. And we also no longer need the data classes import here. And for the Twitch stream, we're going to do exactly the same thing. So Twitch streaming service, that's going to inherit from streaming service, which we're going to need to import. Let's copy that from here like so and then we have to do exactly the same thing here so when we create the buffer data then we're going to call the retrieve buffer data like so this import is no longer needed and this import is no longer needed either so that's the twitch streaming service and then let's go to the main file where we're also going to slightly change things because now we no longer pass this function as a initializer argument but we're going to add it service dot add device get webcam buffer data and here same thing we no longer need to pass this as an initializer argument but we're going to pass it to the add device function let's try to run this code now and you see it still works as we expect, except now, of course, the buffer data is an array. But the nice thing now is I can add multiple devices. So I could add here another device, which is get uh, DSLR. There we go. And now when I run this code, this is still gonna work correctly. And you see now we get here an array with two pieces of data. And that's the nice thing about using these design patterns and try to reimagine them a bit, because often you can really easily adapt them more to your needs by kind of stepping away from the standard way of doing things. And as you can see in this case, actually the abstract base class has really an advantage over the protocol class because it allows you to define stuff on the superclass level that you can then use in any of the subclasses. So that's one reason why uh, you might want to use a abstract base class instead of a protocol in your code. I find the bridge pattern to be quite powerful, especially if you combine it with functional approaches like I did in this video. Another pattern that's also really powerful is the abstract factory. And I did a video about that pattern recently. If you wanna watch that, click the link in the top. I hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a like if you did. Consider subscribing to my channel if you wanna learn more about software development and design. Thanks for watching, take care, and see you soon.